So, Hood Justice. I Abstract called, art. I called the horseman uh, Saturday. Junior horseman, of course. And I said, are you going to come over for Hood Justice on Sunday? Because, of course, he watched the first one with me. And he's like, I sure am. And the next day on Facebook, he, in fact, had wished the world a happy Hood Justice Day. That's how excited he was for this show. This show, I got a soft spot in my heart for this show. Because you just got to accept it for what it is. And what is that? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The best that's fair enough actually. The best explanation I've ever heard from anybody is it's Grand Theft Auto with pro wrestlers. Sure. Can I, can I stop you right there? I have not played Grand Theft Auto. But I have been told that one of the appeals of this of the game besides the fact that you can do all sorts of horrible atrocious things and get points for them is that there is a story to it. And you can follow the story and it makes sense. Well, there is a story to the Urban Wrestling Federation. No, there's not. No, there is. I don't know what the story... I don't understand the story, but there is a story. I'll tell you what the story is. It's very simple, Vinny. Story is that there's a bunch of gangs, and they all want to get that money. That's it. I see. (laughs) The problem is... I have this problem still after two episodes... I have no earthly idea. I shouldn't say no earthly idea, because I I know a few of the people in a few of the different gangs. But I still really, honestly, have no idea who anybody is. That's that's the biggest problem with this show. That's a big problem, Brian. It is a huge problem. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) I have the same one, by the way. Don't get me wrong. It's a big problem. In fact, the show opened up with some graphics, and I was like, I was on cloud nine. Because I thought, oh, there's going to be some graphics here. I'm going to understand who all these people are. Unfortunately, the graphics didn't last very long. No. And I still didn't know who anybody was. Now, I will say, I paid really, really close attention. And and by the end of the second show, I will say, I'm starting to figure out who certain people are. I finally figured out who Uncle Murda was. It's taken me two shows. I have no idea. Apparently, he was all over the first show, and I didn't even know. I thought he was <laughs> like clue. some secret special guy that was going to show up later. You know, like yeah. some guy in a video game. No, he's all over the first show, and he was all over this show as well. I do know who this guy is. How proud you must be. <laughs> I, I really was. I won't lie. Now, positives of this show are a lot of large-breasted honeys. You With fine admit. asses as well. Yeah, you got to admit, Vinny. And the other the other the other uh, the other uh, highlight is, uh, or the other positive is, you got to admit the wrestling is not bad. Uh, you came down. Uh, you were watching Ring of Honor while I was watching this, so you finished ten minutes earlier. You came down and said, "What do you think?" And I said, "I have never seen a show with such a great disparity between the quality of the matches and the quality of the other shit." Yeah, these matches were fun. There were some good matches. There I, was some fine action on the show. I mentioned to Dave yesterday that, uh, and he didn't care one bit, but the <laughs> fact was I mentioned it to him. Dave is not the target audience. No. Ricky Ortiz had the best match I've ever seen him have on this show. Oh, pfft. yeah. <laughs> By, like, leaps and bounds. And again, I realize standards are low for Ricky Ortiz here in 2011. Indeed. But it was still the best match he ever had. All of the matches on this show were fun matches. Now, the rest of it, again, I still don't have any idea what's going on. I mean, I do. I, I mean, I know they all want that money, but I don't know who's who, who hates who. Who's on whose side. Who's on whose side. Who has history. I, I'm still who trying got to. beef. If I look through my notes, I, I can tell you who did the shooting at the end of the last show. Who? Tell me. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But I, I did I, write I it down. I the show. I took notes. I have no idea who did the shooting. I did I did write it down because I... I think they said at one point Slick Wagner Brown was the shooting victim. That may have been. But I don't know who was pulling the trigger. Which we didn't get a follow-up on, by the way. No, they just said that he had a... I, I think they said it had just happened, so we were led to believe this show happened the second after that shooting. I see. That was point one. And point two, I believe they said that it must be a great adrenaline high. Sure. Like, getting shot is, uh, you know, like bungee jumping. 
I'm sure to some people it might be. It's a thrill to be shot at. All right, let's just go through the show. All right, go for it. I want to hear your review. Show opened with I've highlights got a, of the last show. I've got a 2,000-word review that's going into the newsletter this... Uh, I don't. I do. This is one of those things where it may just be best if I read word for word, but I will try to skim here. The highlights of the last show included lots of blood and violence and people talking about money. Mm-hmm. There's a three-minute package. That's all that happened. I have no idea who any of these characters were or who I was supposed to care about. Then we were told it just got real. And men shot guns at each other. Two men had a conversation in a stairwell or something. They agreed it was about to get real. A third man showed up. <laughs> I can already tell it's going to be a great review. <laughs> they, they, talked about, they talked about fools named Briscoe and Uncle Murda. Something was bullshit. Somebody was going back to Cali. The third man left, and I'm fairly certain the first man ordered the second man to kill the third man. Yeah. That's what I got out of this. Yeah. Okay. Here we got some graphics. It was important, by the way. It was important that in this segment, they did alert us that the belt equals money. And power. Well, they didn't say that. It just is money. At some point, they said the belt equals power. Okay. Well, that's fine. And, and, And somehow, I will say that. I will say in the UWF, that somehow makes sense. Sure. We haven't even seen the belt yet. No. I'm sure it's covered in bling. That is an excellent point. I am suddenly very curious to see this belt. <laughs> it better deliver. I, I want this belt. <laughs> I, want, I want the plate of this belt to, to be like a garbage can size. Just just this massive thing. Yes. So we got some graphics. Cuban Link, DC Killer, and Ricky Reyes came out. Hey, this is an improvement. There were graphics. There were graphics. So there, they shot this in... Is this the Hammerstein Ballroom? I don't know where they shot it. It looks like it. It may be. I've forgotten. But ordinarily, they keep it very lit, except sometimes when guys come out, they have kind of a light show going on, and you can see that they are in a a decent-sized building with absolutely nobody in it. We got reports from fans who were there that estimated 35. Yes. And and the capacity is not 40. The capacity is several hundred. So, sure. So, Cuban Link... Said he was about getting money for a while. Slick Wagner Brown came out, and we got Slick Wagner Brown versus Ricky Reyes in a Street King title qualifier match. It's a tournament for the, the belt. He had, uh, the announcer said somebody was going to die tonight if they don't get it together. I believe it was DC Killer and Cuban Link who were fighting, even though they came out together. Was it DC or BC? I'm really not sure. I thought it was BC. It may have been BC. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, anyway, there were men fighting the ring. There were men fighting the aisle way. Here was where the show was 12 minutes old, and I was completely sick of it. We were told that the only rule, the only rule. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> the only rule. Now, you got to think back to the early UFCs before Vince tells you this. Okay. The early UFCs, the only rules were, uh, what was it? No eye gouging and no biting, I believe, were the only rules in the original UFC. But everything else, including kicking folks in the nuts, that was all okay. So you, the listener, I want you to guess what the only rule, what is the only rule in the UWF? I'll give you five, a five-second pose to figure out what this are. Here we go. All right, Vinny. What is the one rule in the UWF? The only rule in the UWF is the rope break. Yes. Speaking of breakthrough, it's the only rule in the UWF is the rope break right there. D. Edwards, he's got a hard job and an easy job. He doesn't have to remember a lot of rules, but he's got a lot of shit to put up with. But right there, Ricky Reyes, he was able to break that clover leaf applied by Slick Wagner Brown. You can stab a man in the face with a fork sure. repeatedly yeah. until he gets the ropes. <laughs> well, presumably, yes. <laughs> So, yes. I looked at it that way, but you might be right. They're, well, they showed that. In the, that was basically the whole point of the intro, was a man being stabbed in the face with a fork, and no one cared. But I didn't but, see him getting the ropes for the rope break. I, he must not have grabbed the ropes. Mm. So that's the only rule. So they had a match. Uh, honestly, I don't remember much about this one. Uh, Wagner beat him up the whole time, and then Reyes cut him off and tapped him out with a crossface. People I don't know had a meeting. <laughs> this was... I actually rewound... To record this man's promo. You want to hear what he said? 
Something about serving candy ass motherfuckers. We ain't gonna let no East Coast motherfuckers, nor no motherfucking shit kicking boot cowboy wearing motherfucking South fools come here and take this money from us, man. Real talk. Cause ain't no way in hell we finna let no East Coast motherfuckers, nor no motherfucking shit kicking boot cowboy wearing motherfucking South fools come out here and take this money from us, man. This is our money, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. I couldn't say it with a straight face. <laughs> well, I the, really tried. The people in this promo cannot keep a straight face either. So that was one of the. That was one of the. The I. Uh, I watch this show and I just laugh my ass off for an hour. I don't give a shit. I watch this show and I laugh my ass off for an hour. And and when I see some of these skits and the guys can't keep a straight face, I just laugh every time. So yes, one of them was laughing openly here. One of them was had headphones in, was just listening to music. The guy who was cutting the promo, who I assume was the boss, he left. Somebody else showed up and hit on the girl for a while. Two men were talking in a fancy-looking hallway. And then it ended. At this point, we got graphics. And I thought, yay, graphics. I'll be able to make sense of something. And here's what the graphics read. <laughs> Here is what the graphics said, everybody. Yes. Lep bogus, boys. Mooney count. <laughs> I can't do it. Lep... <laughs> So, Mooney Count. Is that their names? It's Pony <laughs> with an H. <laughs> oh, excuse me. What a fool I am. How can I think a man would have a silly name like Mooney and something suddenly respectable like Hooney? Yes. Okay, so that's what we get when we do get graphics. Let bogus boys Mooney count. Hooney! Whatever. Does it matter? Oh, God. So, they went into a door. Coming out of the door were the two men from the fancy hallway. They all went their separate ways. One of them got in a car and drove away. <sighs> yeah. Men met in a dressing room. <laughs> I think, and in fact, I was proven right by the end of this. One of them was Scorpio Sky. I recognize somebody on the show. Why? Because I watched some PWG, PWG before. Mm. So, Scorpio Sky is involved. Two men met and hug, hugged, and they, and they slapped hands about nine different times. And when I say nine different times, I don't mean like they slapped in hands nine times in a row and then talked. No, I mean they st- slapped hands, they talked for a while, slapped hands again, talked for a while, slapped hands again, repeat, 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 repeat. You know, one problem with this show, <laughs> I, I don't want to harp on the negatives here, but uh, one of the problems with this show, let's be honest, it's one thing when you, when you do a bunch of skits and you have no idea what the guys are talking about. That's a problem. It's an even bigger problem when you do a bunch of skits and you don't know if you know what the fuck these guys are talking about because the guys talking are mumbling. Yeah. There was a lot of mumbling on this show. Mm-hmm. Where even if I wanted to know or, or I could start to piece things together, I wouldn't be able to because I couldn't even hear these people. There are some serial mumblers in the UWF. Yeah. Got to fix that. Speaking of, in this next segment, two guys and a girl were having some drinks. I couldn't understand anything anything they've said. I have seen almost all Wacky Lucha skits I've seen, I've understood better, and they are in Spanish. And this I was, understood a little of this. I By the end, I understood, understood a little. In the middle of this, I wrote, this isn't so bad as funny, it just sucks. And a few seconds later... They proved me wrong. Yes. Because one of the guys was rambling on, talking about whatever, and then the other guy, who had his arm around the girl, turned to his male friend and said, quote, you fucking up my pussy. Yes. And so the guy got the message as he left. So the first man turned to the woman and said, you still owe me some pussy, right? She shook her head. He said, no. Motherfucking geez. And it ended. <laughs> he was appalled. Yeah, but not surprised. Yes, he had a, he sensed that his friend was fucking up his night, and it was. And by the time he kicked him out, it was too late. This was not the first time his pussy had been fucked. No. 
Okay, we went back to that one room where the one guy was laughing and the other guy had headphones in. Boss man returned. At this point, everyone had been hitting on his girl, and when he showed up, they all stopped. We were only 23 minutes into the show. Was this the one where the guy took his pants off? Yes. The uh, the boss explained some of these guys in this room were taking Block's spot. Who the fuck is Block? You know one of the guys. What is his spot? I don't know. At this point, yes, one of the men stood up and removed his trousers to reveal some teal Speedos. I believe he said that he had been watching wrestling forever, and this is what wrestlers wore. To which the boss said, so you walk around in those every day with those under your pants. And the guy said, yes. And then everyone in the room could not contain their laughter. Yes. I, uh, as noted, somewhere around here is where I started to turn around on the show. Although it was not, actually not yet, because the next segment was where actually, I, I think it may have hit bottom here. A guy was reading a magazine. Two other guys interrupted. By the way, he hadn't had a match in like 15 minutes. A guy was reading a magazine, two guys interrupted, and here's just what I wrote. This show makes me feel drunk. I feel like I am the guy at the party who got way too drunk way too early before everyone showed up, and now people I don't know are walking in, and I'm trying to figure out who they are, and even if someone tries to explain it to me, I can't understand them. I stand by that. That's what watching UWF is like. Like, you're the only drunk guy at a party. I actually understood this segment, if it's the same one we're talking about. This was Lep Bogus Boys... Hootie and Count meeting with Uncle Murda. Really? Yeah. It's fascinating. And How that, did you determine this? I, I I was trying really hard to pay attention. There was a point later where I recognized Let Bogus Boys because I saw their shirts. Yes. They they said that Murda's money would be their own soon, and he said, I don't see that. Hmm. And they said, we'll see on the streets. Hmm. Trouble. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Backstage. Somebody wanted to get some shit together. I believe Eddie Kingston was there. Yeah, they were making fun of him for losing to a midget at the last show. <laughs> yeah. Homicide, everyone. Mm-hmm. Out came 40 Glock, Willie Mack, who was the dude in the Speedos, and his partner was Famous B. Let's see. Billy Blue came out. Backstage, Scorpio Sky told somebody he got this. The match, when it finally started, was, as best I could tell, Willie Mack and Famous B versus G's and Bandito Jr. Right? I think so, yes. Yeah. Scorpio Sky also came out and did a bunch of stuff. Point is, there were five, perhaps six men out here doing a bunch of spots, and they were cool. Yeah. This was a... Have you ever watched the old, old Ring of Honor matches when they would just do a scramble match? When the, when the announcers would say, quote, this is just going to be a mindless series of spots, this reminded me of those. Just two guys would do a big spot, one of them would win the spot, basically, the other one would bail, and the other guy would stay in and do something with somebody else. Sure. Repeat, repeat, repeat. It a was fun cool. match. It was very cool. They did a big train wreck spot that ended with the uh, 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 Willie Mack, the big dude in the Speedos. He was the biggest man, and he finally hit a... Giant dive onto the pile. This train wreck spot features some of the best catches you will ever see. I was totally fine with all this. And then finally, G's won. I believe he pinned Famous B with uh, something like a foot stomp to the back of the head. It was not, not as dangerous as it sounds. The G's up, hose down. That's what they called it, yes. Mm-hmm. This gets a giant thumbs up. It was a good match. I was, enjoyed this. I was, I was amazed watching this because, A, there's a lot of good workers yeah. in the UWF. And, uh... And the funniest thing was, G- I kept watching G's, and I'm like, geez, this guy is, uh, you know, no pun intended, this guy's pretty damn good, but he doesn't seem to be able to get to the top rope. Do you know what's sad? No. Like, every time he tried to scale the top rope, well, it was like, it was the scariest thing he'd ever done in his life. <laughs> I don't and know. he finally would get up there and do his move, but it was, it was rough going every time. That may have been because the middle rope was broken. Oh, that's also I, a problem. I did notice that. Mm. The middle rope I didn't here, notice the ropes were very loose. I didn't notice one was broken. The middle rope went beyond being loose and was just broken. Guys were like, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was just busted. They may have fixed it before the main event, although it wouldn't matter for that one. So this match uh, ends, and uh, G's and his crew are happy, and they got their hoochie, and they're all walking down the aisle, and some of the 35 fans came over to celebrate, and there were children there. Yeah. 
Well, they're just watching the wrestling. Like less than ten. Yeah, but before the wrestling guys are coming out and they are saying motherfucker over the house well, mic over and true. over and over again. And we got about a ten second shot of that uh, one of the the large breasted uh, ladies' they, 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 ass. They put an ass on camera, and I don't know if I would say it was on there for too long, but it was certainly on camera for long enough. So, the let bogus guys left the building. They ran into somebody else who's going inside to the man you have told me is now Uncle Murda. Uncle Murda explained to this new person that his money had been coming up short. So he was going to go to Miami and visit Briscoe, and he made it clear that by visit he meant kill. <laughs> yes. We saw what I believe was a drug deal going down in a park. This took five seconds. We saw, but did not hear, a guy talking to a girl in a hallway for six seconds. Some guys are hanging out in a locker room. I think, and actually this is, I think this is wrong by what happened by the end, but what I thought was happening was one guy was bragging about the white girl he had fucked. But then one of them got furious and left the room and stormed out. Now, what the guy was talking about was there was a girl he had fucked, but it, and it may have been a white girl. But more importantly, it was one of this angry man's bitches. And he was upset that someone was fucking around with his broad. Yes, his broad. He made sure to mention broad repeatedly. He said broad. So, and before he came out... It was Rashi Brown. Yes, before he came out, though, we missed a segment where, and I quote, somebody yells at some guys. Okay. At that point, the angry man, although I just wrote an angry man, because I couldn't tell if this was the same angry man or not, or a different angry man. It was, in fact, Rashi Brown, formerly of Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to deal with whoever fucked with his broads. For the first time in the entire show, we had a man who could speak. He cut a promo. He was, well, upset that someone had fucked with his broads. He was upset that Rich Ortiz talked to one of his bitches when he wasn't around. Out came the former Ricky Ortiz from SmackDown. He has now cut off all his terror. I think he got some new tattoos, and he calls himself Beast Ortiz. Beast Ortiz. Beast Ortiz. In a Street King title qualifier match, mm -hmm. this was just two big-ass mofos wailing on each other, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they just beat the crap out of each other. Actually, Brian, what the announcers said was they beat the shit out of each other. They did. That was the exact quote, and you know what? They were right. They beat the shit out of each other. Fight is on. These two men are just beating the shit out of each other on paper. They're going shot for shot. Who's gonna if you like slobber knockers, this is the match for you. The most amazing thing about this Hosses. match is more than just two dudes beating the shit out of each other because uh, they went up top, and uh, Rich Ortiz, Beast Ortiz... Teased, superplexing him from the post to the floor. And, of course, Rashi Brown wasn't down with that, and so they had a big battle. And uh, they battled for, like, a full minute, and it was never boring. They had psychology in this match. Sure. The, the, yes. And so, finally, Rashi speared him out of his boots, and Ortiz took a hilarious bump. And uh, Rashi pinned him, advanced in the tournament, got his fucking money, and defended the honor of his broad. Yes. So, yes. that's the story right there, everybody. Ain't nothing wrong with this match at all. Big Block came out to talk about money. Homicide yelled at somebody. The Triple C's informed us they are here to get that money. They were named Gunplay, Young Breed, and Torch. The first one, Gunplay, he starts off doing what I think was going to be a Macho Man impression. Then he stopped and he just talked for a while. And then uh, Young Breed spoke. Young Breed is, uh, if you've ever watched King of the Hill, Young Breed is UWF's answer to Boom Hour, a man who cannot speak at all. And Torch said some stuff. Homicide cut a promo at night under the Brooklyn Bridge. This was an awesome promo. He talked about his houses across the country and his bitches. Yes. Did I miss anything there? No. Eddie I just loved I just loved every moment of this. Hey, homicide is great. I will he wanted to introduce us to the Brooklyn Bridge because he lived in the best city in the country. And he talked about how he had houses in L.A. and in down south, he said. Even New York. And he had bitches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we had King Kingston. Eddie Kingston was getting drunk somewhere. And I mean that by which he was cutting a promo. He may he's fact, been drinking ever since he lost to Homicide he may in the last show. He's getting drunk somewhere right now, too. Yeah. Yes. He's, the, the, the gimmick is he lost to Homicide, and he is not over it. He's not dealing with this well. And he said Homicide had advanced in the tournament, and uh, I believe he said that he was going to take Homicide out. I know he said that he had been ready to die since age 14, 
So it didn't matter if homicide was threatening him. Mm -hmm. He said since the first day his mother put him out of her fucking womb, he'd been hopeless. I've been hopeless for years. I don't care. And I believe he claimed he owned a building, and that's how he made his money, and he was still drinking. (laughs) Brother, since the age of 14, homicide, I've been ready to die. Since the first day my mother put me out of her fucking womb, I didn't want to be here. I've been hopeless. Nah, man. Nah, man. I've been hopeless for years. The cameraman tried to cut him off. He wasn't having none of this. And then we got the end. Somebody was screaming his way down an alley. Actually, the first part of this was awesome. There's this guy. He's screaming down an alley. He is calling somebody out. He clearly wants to fight. Then somebody comes up to attack him to his face, mind you. He's there to fight, and he just... The, the guy, the first guy we saw screaming, all acting all tough. Low Life Louis Ramos. That's who it was? Yes. Isn't he the guy who got stabbed with a fork in the last show? Yes. Yes. Well, he did not get stabbed with a fork here, but he just got a public ass whipping. By Murder One. How do you know? I just... I was paying attention. <laughs> it's fascinating. Murder One and Low Life Louis had a brawl in an alley, and it went on a long-ass time, and... Uh, uh, it was very brutal. They used razor wire. Yes, they were, and, and, and if they had just grabbed barbed wire, like a, you know, a, a gravity strand of barbed wire, I might have assumed this was fake. This was shot in a real alley in New York, next to a real chain link fence with what I assume was real razor wire. Yeah, yes, they're insane. And uh, Louis, uh, his gimmick is that he mutilates himself on a regular basis. <laughs> yes, yes, which is what happened here. And so uh, Murder beat the shit out of him, as the announcer said, and uh, caused him to bleed uh, profusely. And then Louis uh, made a comeback, sent him into the fence, Murder gigged, and then Louis put a plastic bag over his head to kill him. Right. And uh, he was screaming, and I quote, I'll kill ya, I'll kill ya. And then the screen froze, and the show was over. So last time, we saw a shooting. And this time, I think we saw one guy kill another guy with a plastic bag. But right. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to wait till the next show. That's the UWF, everybody. That was some hood justice right there with that bag. I suppose. You know, I got to say one thing about that last segment right there. This was exactly like a TNA brawl where it goes on way too long. But they played rap music the whole time. <laughs> You know what I mean? They did. Like a New Jack run-in? Yes. And for some reason, that made this like a million times better. Hmm. So maybe that's something they need to do on Impact when they have one of these long-ass brawls. They need to just play rap music. Yeah, play play some Lep uh, Bogus Boys in the background. Hoonie and Count. Hoonie and Count while they're they're doing this, and and, uh, and then there you go. So yeah, that's that's, uh, Hood Justice, everybody. It's replaying a million times. It's one hour long. Um, it's not for everybody. In it may fact, not be for anybody. It's probably not for almost all of you. And uh, I could not watch this show every day. <laughs> God. I could not watch this show every week. But uh, I am okay watching this show every three months, as is the Junior Horseman. It is an hour of hilarity. What more is there to say? Pony! <laughs> With an H! <laughs> 